Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I certainly want also to thank David for this fantastic opportunity, this setting here, this auditorium. Uh, I will come back to that because for me, it's a sort of an ideal place to exchange ideas on this issue. And um, I think that it is very important to talk about this landmark decision uh, who had enormous, an enormous influence on data protection and on the work of the European data protection authorities. Uh, I only have 20 minutes, so it will be difficult to really go into all the details of this six-point presentation, so I will skip a lot of them. I will skip certainly some, but some uh, uh, ideas from the um, uh, cornerstone document that is the guidelines. Uh, in November of last year, the Working Party 29 has adopted guidelines, um, how they understand, how they are reading, how they are interpreting the case, the Google Spain ruling, and also giving 13 guidelines how to work with the specific cases that will be uh, asked. Well, and you might want to press that sign. Excuse me? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's better. Um, it would be witness of an improbable ivory tower mindset to only invest in the protection of privacy or in pure judicial approach. The issue emerging from the Google case is not only about the right to be forgotten, about applicable law, very important, about jurisdiction, but also on decision-making power, power in general. Law is always a reflection of the balance of power. Since Machiavelli, Hobbes, we are very aware of this. But in the 20th century, we have accepted by trial and error that a broad general human rights approach is possible. I know, I know, it's the economy, stupid. But if we want to resolve the issue of a democratic, in a democratic perspective, we have to realize that human rights, rights have brought an important key. That's why in this great building of the rule of law, there has been a, a, a provided an additional floor, a solid roof, a shield that once and had to protect the citizen from attacks against their freedom and integrity. So dear listeners, you will immediately understand that I won't limit myself to um, judicial analysis. I think that if we are looking through the looking glass of Google Spain, we have also been impressed by the importance of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union of 12 December 2007. The judgment made a clear distinction between fundamental rights on the one hand, human rights, and interests, in economic interests of interests of the public. It's in the section 909, the four last section, that it is really very clearly stated by the court. And it's amazingly remarkable that no much attention is paid to this issue in the comments that recently have been written on the judgment just after the pronunciation. You could, you could almost become cynical about it. I read and heard, heard different arguments as you Europeans have missed the point. The internet doesn't work on that way. 
The ICT world has and imposed its own rules. It's the technology. And as a final quote, this is not how our business model works. Why, why is it so difficult to accept the ruling of the court? Maybe because privacy or data protection has not been considered as a human right, but only as an interest. Should interest, rights in general, help not be treated on the same level? There's one, one major exception. Freedom of speech, free collection of information. I would be unfair to countless commentators if I wouldn't take this into consideration in my analysis. But even here, I strongly would like to point out the clear and detailed assessment made by the Court of Justice in the ruling. There were lots of checks and balances that were carefully expressed. The task of a Data Protection Commissioner is embedded in the protection of the whole human rights, fundamental rights, and need to find the correct and safe balance between the different basic rights, such as personality rights, privacy, protection of personal data, as freedom of speech, free gathering of information, the right to the integrity of a person, security, freedom of trade, right of property, education, the house of the rule of law provides a lot of rules, countless flaws. And if it can be sometimes difficult to find your way, this is one of the reasons why we today are gathering here in this conference. This auditorium is or should be a perfect power-free space. In Germany, they're talking about Herrschaft Freie of Jürgen Habermas, where we can practice the art of the wheel of ignorance. So that was an introduction. Now back to business. Um, we tried, as Working Party 29, to find already in 2008 solutions for the questions arise by the upcoming search engines. And we have this first document of 2008, and Artemi has already mentioned it. I don't think that today it is not useful to read it. So I skip to the next one. <laughs> what was the reception of the court ruling? First thing, we were relieved because can you imagine that the court should say, well, European law is not applicable? On that moment, I think that a lot of data protection authorities can close their doors. There was also a surprise. The surprise was that the court clearly stated that the right to be forgotten is a fundamental right, is something that should be uh, applied on the level of a human right. And it was a surprise because the Advocate General had not accepted this point of view. There was also a lot of uncomfortable feelings. How will we manage it? Because we thought that thousands, ten thousands of applications would come to us. And also, will this sentence not have an inverse effect? Will the reaction, because there was Certainly in the first weeks, there was a, a, a very hostile reaction of a lot of com comments. Should, we not, should it not have an, the effect that, um, yes, that legislators, that lawmaking will try to avoid this, um, the principles of this ruling? And last of it, I think that there was also a very important boost into the world of the data protection authorities. We considered us as empowered eh, because not only data protection can be empowered by the maintenance of law and order, eh, 
but also the court has given us real practical tools to do our job protecting the citizen. We try to implement this um, ruling. There were exchanges between different data protection authorities. We have also a lot of meetings with um, people from uh, Google. Peter Fleischer was practically every uh, week in uh, another capital in Europe. It was good to talk about it. Eh? And we tried to seek a common position from all the 28 countries. We have them make these guidelines working out all the um, experiences that in the different countries we, uh, we uh, were confronted with. And then we adopted on the 26th of November these uh, guidelines on the implementation. The structure of this document is uh, one interpretation of the judgment. Very interesting to read how we um, were also struggling with a lot of concepts in it. And secondly, trying to be effective, making a list of common criteria for the handling of complaints. Important to uh, say to you, these are guidelines. In the letter that the document was sent to Google, it was also clearly stated by Isabel falca pierrotin the chairwoman of the Working Party, that these are guidelines that can be re re reviewed, can be uh, made better in the course of time. What is very interesting also is the first two pages of these guidelines, because here you have an executive summary, an executive summary who gives you a very short but very sharp introduction to the, the concepts where that we find as Working Party 29 into uh, the ruling Google Spain. Thirteen, uh, nine uh, of this are uh, mentioned, and if you looked very, um, if you look to them, you will see that a lot of these questions will arise also on the second, the third, and the third panel today. The criteria are, of course, the most um, important of these uh, guidelines. Criteria, and then we have 13. I will not say that it are really, on a scientific way, criteria that you can use, but it also sometimes are more questions. Questions that should help to resolve very practical um, situations where not only Google, because it's Google in the first time who has to look to the applications, but then after appeal to the data protection authority, they have to consider, will we remove the URL, will we delink, will we make this de indexation? Sometimes a question is divided because there are a lot of subsections. For example, five, is the data relevant and not excessive? Of course, that is not an easy question to answer. Sometimes you have questions who are not really completely in line with, the, with uh, the ruling. For example, the question of the prejudice. It's clear that the, the, the court has said you don't need to prove a prejudice. You don't have to demonstrate that for having uh, the, the right to remove your data. After that we had issued these guidelines, we have tried to, to in the working party, to, to find also more substantial um, solutions for questions that were a little bit well answered, but not uh, on, a, on a way that uh, everybody was happy with it. And I think that there are still a lot of questions, but the most important, I think, is the question of the territorial validity and the enforcement. You can say, oh, it's only for the country involved, but not, that's not true, it's a European law, so it should be uh, implemented in the whole of Europe, what Google accepted. 
but maybe it is worldwide. Eh? Why it is worldwide? <coughs> well, it is a personal right, and once a decision, a judicial decision has been taken about a personal right, it should be worldwide accepted. There's another question, but what do you do with a country without establishment, but that's more really uh, um, for the specialists. Another problem is another problem of more political uh, way is the um, Barbara Streisand effect. The more you are crying to be delisting, the more you are exposing yourself. Um, and a little bit critics on Google, in the first weeks and months, they were only speaking not of the Google Spain case, but of the Costeja ruling. I tried to, to change that and to say, let's sp uh, talk about Super Mario, because Mario is uh, uh, it's Mario Gonzalez, uh, Costeja. So, uh, but I think that we have to use the normal, the general uh, denomination, who is Google, Spain, and the rest. But there you see uh, that it is also a question of power. Who had the power to give a name to a certain sentence? There is also a problem with inaccurate data. Uh, I will not go into the details, but that is sometimes a very difficult uh, thing to do. But what is the reality? The reality, and I take now this uh, example for Belgium. We started with one case and we ended today, yesterday, with 34 complaints. 34 complaints. That's practically nothing if you take into consideration that according to the uh, numbers that Google has given, 45% were not accepted from this 7,158 requests. So that means that only one on 210 cases are coming to our um, uh, data protection authority. We handled already 21 of them. 16 have been accepted by Google. Six were accepted by our data protection authority. And only one is a question who could not be, where we could not uh, reach an agreement. The weak, biggest problem for us was, in the beginning, the censor, censorship. We didn't want to have this censorship. But we, in all the cases, the 34 cases that we have, we never have had a problem on censure. And I will give you one little um, example. This is a, a, an, an extract of a letter of Google where they denied to um, delete uh, an index. Well, the only thing that they are saying is that the person in question uh, was somebody who is a dangerous person. And then on that moment, they say, well, you must be uh, very aware of the fact that he can, in future relations, also be dangerous. But I think that we have also a solution for that. Google has accepted that if there is a judge uh, a court ruling to um, find a solution that he got a clear um, criminal record that they should remove also this URLs. So I will come to my conclusion. I think that the question of this example is once again given an example that the right to be forgotten and also the questions that are arising by the Google case will, after all, all end here in a judicial debate, but also in courtrooms. And once again, today we are in a courtroom because 
I understand that also today on the High Court in Great Britain, there is a sentence according to a problem uh, arised by the use of um, the Google search engines. And I think that I will again invoke the power free space as requested by, yes, uh, John Stuart Mill as Rawls, Hannah Arendt, especially by Jürgen Habermas, because I think that is important to take that into account also in this auditorium. And such a sphere is happened also yesterday in the premises of the CNIL in Paris, where several data protection officials from Europe meet a delegation of Google to discuss the terms and conditions that were put in place two years ago and who were subject of several rulings of several data protection authorities and that now Google is accepting to review them and to give uh, a new terms and conditions, I think, in the month of June uh, that it will be this year. That's a very positive evolution, I think, that Google accepted the Google Spain sentence, that they comply fully and to set up a system to implement this sentence. And what we should learn, we all should learn from this case is, one, that uh, the, the data protection authorities must be brave and courageous, like the Spanish did. That we should be brave and courageous to impose instructions and decisions. Secondly, that human rights really exist, not because they have been proclamated, but by the fact that we are using them in litigation, in courts. And third, that at least it is a question of power. And that in a democratic and a decent society, this power is laid down in the law, executed by those who are bound by the law and enforced by courts of justice. So thank you for your attention.